Welcome to the AME Food Testing Show. Today's topic, real-time meat contamination test system with Craig Tufnell, CEO, Veritide. Craig graduated with a PhD or doctoral degree in biomedical engineering from the University of Canterbury in Christchurch, New Zealand. He investigated how infants regulate their body temperature and he was part of a research group investigating sudden infant's death syndrome, or SIDS, or sudden unexpected death. He worked for 15 years at Ocom Electronics, a company that develops electronic industrial motor systems. Craig soon became responsible for research and development at Ocom, then director of design, responsible for all product development and marketing. Since December 2012, he is now Chief Executive Officer at Veritide Limited. Veritide is a startup with a sound knowledge base from research carried out at the University of Canterbury. Veritide has developed certified anthrax spore detection devices and also known as Keeker. Veritide also has a strong connection with the local meat processing industry a very important industry for New Zealand. Welcome with me now, Craig Tufnell. Craig? Good morning, Andy. Uh, it's a pleasure to be on your show with you today. Well, would you like to add anything to your introduction? No, I think you've uh, summed it up pretty nicely. Um, yes, so back here in New Zealand, and it's a great place to be. Excellent. Let's begin with our first very general foundational question. What is a foodborne pathogen? Okay, a foodborne pathogen is really any microorganism or infect infectious agent that is carried by food that can cause disease. And uh, in our case, we're really interested in disease in people. Um, that, that could be a bacteria, fungus, virus, um, bacteria, for example, listeria and salmonella. The carrier being food is not necessarily meat. A lot of people think of it being meat, but certainly vegetables um, and um, milk can also carry bacteria that can, can be um, harmful to humans. Well, Craig, that's an excellent summary about the things that can harm us while we're trying to gain nourishment. What types of contaminants can meat products contain? The, the obvious contaminants for meat is bacteria. That's um, a, a huge issue. Um, but along with bacteria, microorganisms such as fungus and yeast can also be a problem. In terms of contaminants, when we look at a carcass, for example, we might, might see faecal contamination or wool and, or hair. Both faecal and wool are bacteria vectors. Faecal is probably the most important one and is a, is a huge issue in terms of bacterial contamination. But also within a, um, a, a meat processing plant, we might see uh, metal fragments, for example, from sores, chain oil. The carcasses are transported around the processing plant on a, uh, on a chain, hanging underneath the chain, and that has to be lubricated. Chain oil, of course, is um, a food grade. You might also see fibres from clothes, um, cotton fibres in particular from clothing on carcasses. They don't cause any problem. They're, they're obviously cleaned, um, cleaned clothing. So there's, there's quite a few contaminants there. Possibly there may be antibiotics or ho hormones or dioxins and sprays. But from, from our perspective, what we tend to concentrate on is the microorganisms and in particular bacteria. Bacteria is a big problem. Um, we're talking about 16% of people in the US get some form of food poisoning every year in the US. It can be implicated in up to 4,000 deaths and 200,000 uh, hospitalizations every year. And the cost to the US economy is staggering. Um, up to a, a good estimate would be up to around $50 billion annually. So the, the bacteria is really the, the main thrust of our work. So the contamination could include microorganisms, fecal contamination, and other items. What are meat spoilage bacteria or microorganisms that you referred to? Well, meat spoilage is 
essentially when um, meat goes off, but it's not necessarily uh, something that will um, cause disease in humans. Um, again, meat spoilage can be bacteria, it can be um, yeasts, um, fungus, but bacteria is typically the main problem that causes meat spoilage. Again, it is a significant problem for the meat industry. We normally think of pathogenic microorganisms being a big problem, but spoilage is is a, is a huge issue. I think there is around a billion dollars worth of beef is just discarded every year in the US because it is spoiled. So that is a, a big focus for the meat processing industry. Well, Craig, that certainly is alarming. One billion dollars of food product destroyed because it is unfit for human consumption. What does the meat industry do as far as tests to detect foodborne pathogen in their products? Um, the, the bulk of the testing is still the traditional um, plate counting, aerobic plate counting and plate counting for specific bacteria. Um, however, I mean, there is a lot of new, newer tests coming into play. There's um, PCR testing is being done. There's a lot of um, other technologies that are being introduced as well. However, the, the, the standard biological testing, plate counting, is still by far the, uh, from what I'm aware anyway, by far the biggest amount of testing. There is approximately 500 million swab tests performed on food and food process in the food processing industry in the US and Europe every year. So that is certainly the bulk of the testing. And that will be for both pathogens and for um, spoilage bacteria. Well, Craig, Craig, for the clarity of our audience, when we refer to traditional microbiological tests, we are referring to the same technology that Madame Curie developed when she took a swab sample and then put it in a media or some growth type food for the organisms and then basically cooked it in an oven for X number of hours and then looked at the resulting colony formations and made a determination of the organism based on her visual examination. Isn't that correct? Uh, I hadn't heard that story, but I'm, I'm sure it probably, it probably is. Um, yes, yeah, so it's certainly a technology that's been done for a long time. Um, it's treated as the gold standard, but it also has um, many issues. So um, to, it, it is a very important thing to be doing, but it's not. Um, it doesn't meet all the requirements of food processes. Well, it's interesting you mentioned the challenges. What are the technical challenges of those traditional tests as far as making a clear analysis? Okay, well, one of the issues with those original those, those tests is that firstly you've got accuracy. It has to be interpreted by a skilled microbiologist. Um, I believe the accuracy of that is around 70%. However, that is only part of the story because you're trying to grow bacteria um, where you have to choose the right medium to grow the specific bacteria. So you're kind of assuming that you're going to have a specific bacteria and, and then grow it. But there are many, many bacteria species out there um, and it, it's just fraught with difficulties to get that testing right. Also, if, you, if we do just a general aerobic plate count to, just to see the overall level of bacteria, the problem with that is a lot of uh, species may not grow in that medium. So the accuracy is perhaps far worse than 70%. Um, I've heard people suggest that it's plus or minus one order of magnitude. That's pretty extreme, but uh, um, there are certainly some problems with it. The next issue is the time. It takes, say, two to four days for a typical aerobic plate count test. That is a significant problem for processors who have to keep hold their, hold their product until those tests come through. So there's a storage issue, which was also taking days off the shelf life of that product. Um, they can't coverage test, really they're doing sample testing and the bacteria can be 
could be distributed reasonably evenly over a carcass, over a piece of meat, or it may be in specific spots. For example, if the bacteria came from fecal contamination, it's likely to be in a spot where that uh, contamination, um, where, where those feces uh, landed on the carcass. So that's a real significant problem. The testing does not um, cover the entire, the entire product. Or surfaces. Again, if you use that testing on surfaces, you're just doing sam samples off something that's just quite random. Um, the testing is expensive, um, so to do more and more tests costs more and more, um, more and more dollars. And meat food processing in general spends a lot of money on um, pathogen and spoilage testing. So those are some of the key um, problems with the existing technologies. With some of the more rapid biotechnologies, um, then the testing can be reduced to the order of, say, an hour or so. However, the problem with that is it still doesn't allow um, full coverage testing. You still have to um, take samples from the product, um, so and it is still expensive. So that, that's really the, 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 the main problems with the existing technologies. So the, by the existing technology, some of which you've already mentioned, polymers chain reaction or DNA testing, as yep. well as some other technologies, is that correct? That's right. I mean, there's there's a lot of work being done out there because this is a problem that a, a lot of people realize uh, that needs solving. Um, there's microfluidic separation. Um, there is, there's of course, ATP testing, but that can only be done on surfaces, not on the product itself. Um, there's various sorts of spectroscopy, Raman spectroscopy. Um, from a more research perspective, you've got um, flow cytometry. So there are a lot of technologies being worked on. Um, at the end of the day, the plate counting, is, as I said, is still the most popular at the moment. Well, Craig, here's the reason why you're the guest today. Which <laughs> new proprietary testing technology uses fluorescence. Okay, the, a number of the technologies out there actually already do use fluorescence um, as a means of enhancing what they're doing. Our aim is to use fluorescence, the natural fluorescence of both the bacteria and unfortunately the, the product that the bacteria is on, that natural fluorescence to help identify and quantify the amount of bacteria that's on the product. So the, the challenge here is, is not so much that the bacteria flip fluoresces, that's, that's a good thing, but the various constituents of the, of the meat that we're trying to test where the bacteria sits also fluoresces. So that's where um, the core of our technology comes in is to be able to do that separation between the bacteria and the food product. So, does the Veritide Technologies test for total viable organisms with quantification? That's right. At, at the moment, we're cro just concentrating on the total viable organism tests. That's the bulk of the tests that are carried out, so that's where our focus is. There is quantification, absolutely. Um, it's a difficult question for us to be able to calibrate that quantification because the existing techniques, plate counting, has its own inaccuracies. So that's uh, what we're trying to work through at the moment. However, by working with the meat companies, our aim is actually to focus the pro product on what the meat company needs to improve its processes. So. Um, from our perspective, a lot of our technology, a lot of our, our work is working with uh, meat processors to tailor the product that we develop to help solve their problems. So although um, doing um, a quantitative measurement of bacteria is important, we can also just look at the faecal content on carcasses. That problem is actually a, a simpler problem from a fluorescence perspective, but it is almost more important for process control in, in the meat processing plants because they can identify it much, much. It's an earlier uh, 
part of the contamination. It happens right at the start of the processing line. So if we can detect that very early, it actually solves a lot of the problem for them. Now, this is not, nothing new. Others have already um, attempted to solve this problem, both bacteria and fecal contamination, with fluorescence. So it's not a simple problem. And as I said before, the, the difficulty is separating the fluorescence of the meat itself with the, against the bacteria. So that's where the core of our, our work has been. It's one thing to understand bacteria, but it's even more important to understand the characteristics of the meat. Well, Craig, when you mention fluorescence, you have an actual device that emits light at a certain wavelength and then has some sort of receptor device that your software then interprets the result. Is that correct? That's, that's absolutely correct. Um, at the end of the day, to get the sensitivity we, we need for uh, bacteria, we're using photomultiplier tubes for the detectors. And for um, the light source, we're actually kind of lucky these days because of uh, what's happened with LED technology. LEDs and LED lasers um, have been getting more and more powerful as there's been a lot of research in that area. So that gives us very good light sources, much better than the old days of, um, when people started out in this work of using lasers. Um, a lot of lasers are just not powerful enough. So by light emitting diodes or LEDs, that's known as the world's simplest machine because of their robustness in the emitting of certain lights at light wavelengths can, the, can be predetermined. Can your technologies test the surface and airborne and liquid samples? The answer to that is yes. At the moment we're concentrating on, um, as I said, meat products and surfaces within the processing plants. In fact, surfaces are, very, uh, are a very good, a good area for us to do research and develop products for because um, they typically are an easier background than meat. Uh, for example, stainless steel or aluminium uh, basically doesn't fluoresce. It's not not strictly true. There are some there's some issues there, but it is a very simple um, surface to work on. Plastics conveyors are a little bit more challenging. When it comes to air and liquid. Yes, it can be done. The problems you get with air and liquid is we, we will need to concentrate, have a concentration stage to get the, um, the, to get the bacteria or whatever we're looking for to a, a level that's um, high enough to detect because typically in, in, for environmental samples we're looking for very, very small traces. So yes, it can be done. We're not concentrating on that at the moment. That'll probably be something, be something for the future. Now let's make this clear for our audience of 54,000 food production, food quality, food safety, and food security managers. Veritide has developed a portable instrument which can test rapidly, by that we mean minutes or seconds, on site for the detection of bacteria, viruses, and other biological agents. Is that correct? Not quite. We are concentrating on bacteria. We're not expecting to be able to uh, detect viruses in the near future. Um, bacteria is the crux of the, of the problem for our customers, for the meat processors. Viruses are just so small um, that I think we'll get a, have a lot of difficulty in detecting them. I'm not saying it can't be done, but it's really uh, bacteria is the main focus for us. Very good. One of your products, the Keeker, and I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Uh, the the Keeker product. Say again? It's pronounced uh, Seeker. Oh, Seeker. Okay. Yeah. It takes <laughs> in about three to ten minutes, depending on the spore species, spore density, and the analysis conditions. Yeah, yes, what, um, what Seeker does, it will detect any spores. Um, the focus is to detect um, anthrax. It takes about 10 minutes. Um, it is very reliable. It has been um, certified in the US on anthrax. Um, internally, it can actually even detect 
the different anthrax species. So it will actually say what's, what anthrax species are detected. From a presentation perspective, for the, for the specific customers, which are people who are going out looking at white powder scares, it just says spores are detected, with the philosophy being that if anyone has managed to get spores in a fashion that are suitable for a bioterrorism um, act, then they need to be looked at in more detail. But yes, it can detect um, specific anthrax species. It uses a technology that we won't be able to use for real-time testing of bacteria because it uses um, deep UV or 250, 254 nanometer UV to cause some photochemistry to happen within the spores. And that makes the detection very reliable and allows the species, the different species to be detected. For a real-time application on meat, we can't do that because we need it to be fast enough for the meat processors to get a better coverage so that they can test uh, to a much greater extent. So although I'd love to use that deep UV technology, um, at this stage we can't reuse it. Well, Craig, in reviewing your website, I noticed that your company is developing a cutting-edge technology which includes a handheld wand with fiber optics and also a full carcass scanner. Yes. So the full carcass scanner initially is most likely to be a fecal detector, um, but the handheld wand-type scanner will allow us to both detect fecal matter and bacteria. Um, the technologies available to do a full carcass scanner in, in terms of um, imaging and resolution are not quite there yet for us, but from a fecal perspective, they are. So the handheld device will effectively allow meat processors to replicate their swabbing that they're doing at the moment without making contact with the meat, but do a lot more. For example, if they go up to a carcass um, and they say, hmm, there's possibly... There's a small amount of bacteria on this carcass. I think we should test it more thoroughly. They can see that immediately and um, test in more areas. So that's that's the aim of the handheld device, to increase the coverage. Well, Craig, you've given us an excellent summary of what is a foodborne pathogen, what types of other contaminants can meat products contain, and you've reviewed the traditional technologies that food producers have used in the past and are currently using, then you gave us a bird's eye view of Aritide's new fluorescence type reaction technology and you've also introduced us to your future projects. If you could, could you summarize our discussion and then lead us into your concluding remarks which would tell us about your company's capabilities and the types of clients you can help. Okay, yes, in summary, we talked about um, bacteria being our main uh, foodborne pathogen and um, meat spoilage problem, as it were, um, and how that there are both food spoilage and pathogen bacteria are issues for food processes, in particular meat processes. Um, we talked about the different testing, which the bulk of the testing done at the moment is still standard culturing, plate counting techniques. There are some new techniques out there that are starting to be used. Um, some of the issues for for um, food processes in terms of they need rapid results, uh, accuracy and reliability, um, to avoid contamination. Uh, what else? Have, what else have we talked about? We talked about um, the fluorescence technologies that Veritide is developing with the aim of dealing with some of the meat processes immediate issues in terms of speed, cost and coverage testing. Um, I think a comment here is, is an interesting point to make that with a product that we're working, we're developing, will be very useful for that really instantaneous yes we've got a problem or no we haven't, followed up by uh, other techniques 
perhaps plate counting or, ha- or perhaps PCR to s- identify exactly which species the problem is. So there's sort of a hand-in-hand type um, scenario there. Um, Veritide technology is focused on total viable organisms at the moment, and we're looking to uh, perform tests on meat, surfaces, um, hands, and another, another issue, checking that people have washed their hands properly when they're going into food processing plants. Uh, at the moment, we're developing a portable device for detection of bacteria and feces in the future. Hopefully, we'll have a carcass scanner, uh, probably focused on fecal contamination. So that's the, that's the crux of our discussion today. Excellent. I'd like to outline for our audience so you're actually located, your company, in New Zealand. That's right. Uh, it's a good location for us um, for development because um, food, and in particular meat, is uh, one of the primary industries in this country. And also, New Zealand exports fresh meat globally around the world. So the importance of low bacterial cam- contamination is um, is very high here. So um, we've got some very good customers to work with while we're developing our products. Uh, it's not a not a high population country. Um, Christchurch is also an interesting city in the moment because we had a, a large earthquake that devastated most of the city about two years ago. So it's um, very much in the rebuild. So it's it's a very unusual place to live. It's quite exciting, um, and it's. Uh, it's a uh, it's a long way from everywhere else on on, on the on the planet, but uh, we learn to fly in planes a lot and uh, get around. Excellent. Well, I believe that your company has produced a product that's purchased by the United States government. Is that correct? Um, the seeker was has been purchased by a number of agencies around the world. I couldn't tell you off the hand if it was the United States government or not. I wouldn't be surprised. Um, those purchases were purchases were done before I started, but uh, it, it is certainly a product that has been in, had a lot of interest from um, agencies looking at dealing with white powder skiers. Very good, Craig. I'd like to now allow you your concluding remarks and before we close our interview. Okay. Well, um, thank you, Andy. It's been a, a pleasure talking to you. Um, yeah. Uh, detection of bacteria using fluorescence is the the crux of uh, what we do for the food processing industry. Um, And I hope uh, everyone has enjoyed our talk this morning. Thank you very much. Thank you, Craig. And just outline for our listening audience that Craig's contact information and website are listed on the same webpage as his interview. Craig, I'd like to thank you for your gracious time this morning and wish you the best. Great. Thank you very much, Andy. It was a pleasure. Bye now. Bye.